Recent trends in passenger transport such as growing environmental awareness, rising demand for mobility, need for integration of different transport modes and seamless traffic experience has resulted in a shift in passenger habits and revived demand for low-carbon alternatives such as long-distance rail. Passengers also have high expectations in terms of service quality and speed, need for high-tech solutions, and, if you consider all mentioned, it's not hard to see that high-speed rail is positioned as the transport mode of the future. You are watching Railways Explained, your favorite railway channel, and in this video we are talking about the latest models of high-speed rolling stock available on the market. Billions of passengers use high-speed trains each year. High-speed rail is continuing to develop stronger than ever, and now there are almost 59,000 kilometers of high-speed lines worldwide. As a lot is still under construction, we can only imagine how much this figure will grow in years to come. Given this stronger demand, rail companies are launching, developing or reviving the train services, all with the aim of establishing new connections and enlarging the current volumes. All this is done having in mind not only competitive travel times, but also comfort, energy efficiency, IT and smart mobility solutions. This is where the global leaders in train technology and manufacturing are stepping in and actually competing more than ever. Companies such as Siemens, Alstom, Talgo, CAF, Hitachi, Hyundai, CRRC and others are trying to use their decades of experience to meet these demands and incorporate all the requests in their solutions. Our story begins some 60 years ago, when Japan introduced the high-speed rail service with the first electric multiple unit capable of speeds up to 210 km per hour. In the meantime, the landscape surrounding the high-speed rail has changed considerably. Initially, diesel high-speed trains were developed and in the UK, for example, even produced in large series. Today, electric trains position themselves as the preferred choice. Nevertheless, two distinct approaches can still be noted, which are known as trains with concentrated or with distributed traction. The Japanese opted for the solution with the traction equipment distributed along the train. This approach offered advantages such as enhanced driving dynamics and a more evenly distributed load on the infrastructure. It also enabled the ability to form trains of varying lengths and additional passenger seats in the head cars, all with the aim of increasing the revenue. France, on the other side, took a different approach. In the 1970s, the national operator SNCF and the manufacturer Alstom joined forces to develop their first-generation high-speed train. This model, known as TGV, differed from the Japanese one not only in higher speed, but also in the design. The traction equipment was now located in the head cars, which served as locomotives. Concentrated traction proved more cost-effective and allowed simpler construction and easier operation. But enough with the history. The Avelia Horizon, the world's first double-decker high-speed train, has concentrated traction and a design speed of 350 km per hour. It comes from the manufacturer Alstom, and for it SNCF placed an order back in 2018 for 100 units. Recently, in October 2024, Alstom received another order from Proxima, a new entrant on the French market, for an additional 12 trains. This model will replace the third-generation TGV duplex, which has been in operation since the 1990s. Avelia Horizon can operate in a 7-9 car train set. Its modular interior design allows for easy adaptation in accordance with the needs of passengers. And Alstom claims it reduces the purchase costs by 20% and maintenance costs by 30%. At the same time, it reduces electricity consumption by 20%. However, the fact cannot be ignored that there is a lack of interest from foreign buyers in Alstom's solution. Of course, we are aware that, as part of the technology transfer, 
Hyundai Rotem produces the analogous KTX train in South Korea, while the Acela service in the US is based on the adapted Avelia Horizon solution. The Spanish manufacturer Talgo also offers a rolling stock with concentrated traction. Their trains are distinguished by a unique running gear, where each car is supported by only one pair of independently rotating and self-guiding wheels located between cars. This technology enables cars to be lighter than competitors, consume less energy and, according to Talgo, cost less. In 2005, Talgo launched its first high-speed train with the stated design speed of 350 km per hour, while in Spain and Saudi Arabia, which both have these trains in operation, it is reduced to 300. In May of this year, also in Spain, the new Talgo Avril began passenger service. This train has become the world's first train capable of reaching 330 km per hour with a variable gauge that enables the transition from the standard track gauge to the Birion 1. Each of the head cars has an output of 4400 kW and the enlarged body and updated layout of the climatic equipment have enabled a significant increase in capacity. Germany was also an early adopter of concentrated traction technology. In the 1980s, a consortium of manufacturers, including Siemens Mobility, developed the first locomotive-powered electric train, the ICE-1. Years later, Siemens then offered the market with the Velaro distributed traction train, which proved to be a great commercial success. These types of vehicles have been well received not only in Germany, but also in France, Spain, Belgium, the Netherlands, the UK, Turkey, Egypt and Russia. In 2018, Siemens unveiled the new Velaro Novo train, vehicle with a design speed of 360 km per hour, a 15% lighter car body with enhanced aerodynamics. It is claimed that this enables savings of up to 30% in energy consumption and the ability to accommodate 10% more passengers. The first customer to purchase this train was, surprisingly, the private US operator Brightline West. The company has placed an order for 10 trains with composition of 7 cars for the future service from LA to Las Vegas. Now let's head to East Asia, as in this story, it is not all about Europe. China, renowned for its breathtaking high-speed rail network, has commenced operating concentrated traction trains with a design speed of 210 to 270 km per hour. In the mid-2000s, the country underwent a significant shift in its technical policy as several contracts were signed with almost all global players like Alstom, Bombardier, Siemens and even a Japanese consortium led by Kawasaki. Under a contract with Siemens Mobility, the production of Velaro trains was localized at domestic CRRC facilities. The German company then agreed to relinquish its intellectual property rights to the final product and to limit its involvement in the supply of components. Several modifications of this platform have become China's most widely used trains. Some of the solutions have a declared speed of 380 km per hour, while the 16-car CRH380BL achieved 487 km per hour in 2010. This record for serial high-speed trains has not yet been surpassed with only an experimental 5-car train from Alstom and SNCF reaching a higher speed of 575 km per hour. Then, in 2010, CRRC developed its own Fuxing high-speed train platform, leveraging the gained experience. The Fuxing 400 has a design speed of 400 km per hour, but does not go above 350 in regular service. The new Chinese trains feature automatic train operation, diagnostics and online condition monitoring systems. The launch of this train also marked the beginning of China's high-speed rail rolling stock exports. 
the Foxing 400 commenced operations in Indonesia last year. The next train of the Fuxing platform, the CR450, will have a design speed of 450 km per hour and an operational speed of 400 km per hour. According to Zhao Hongwei, a leading engineer at the China Academy of Railway Sciences, as reported by a Rolling Stock Agency article, current challenges facing the project include the need to significantly enhance aerodynamics and traction system efficiency, to minimize braking distances and noise levels, as well as to introduce new technologies and develop certain new standards. Japan, the origin country of high-speed and distributed traction, continues to develop high-speed trains. The latest entered the service in March this year. The 8th generation E8 train from Kawasaki and Hitachi has a design speed of 300 km per hour. Another train constructed by the same companies, the Experimental Alpha X, for speeds of up to 400 km per hour, has not yet been commercially released. One of the main priorities for Japanese operators is the automatic train operation. It is anticipated that soon all routes in Japan, from depots to stations, will allow for the so-called fourth grade of automation, meaning the unattended operation of trains. In the mid-2030s, experts expect third grade of automation operation on the Tokyo Niigata line to become reality. One of the things not to lose from sight is the fact that despite being a Japanese company, Hitachi has a significant European presence. One of its main assets is in fact is the former Ansaldo Breda from Italy. The Zephyro trains developed by Bombardier in 2021 are manufactured there, and following the acquisition of Bombardier by Alstom, Hitachi acquired a stake in the Canadian company. Hitachi's flagship product on the market is the V300 model, with a design speed of 360 km per hour. The V300 is in operation in Italy since 2015, and you might know it as Freccia Rossa. Now they are also to be delivered to the UK for the needs of their high-speed project. Today Hitachi and Kawasaki are competing for supplies of the E5 trains with a design speed of 320 km per hour for India's first high-speed rail. The project is financed by a loan from Japan, which has limited the pool of potential suppliers. Considering the rapid development of railway transport, India is considering leveraging this supply experience to develop its own high-speed train. Russia most recently fully developed its high-speed project, which included the construction of a high-speed rail from Moscow to St. Petersburg, and the development and production of high-speed trains. The train was developed by the Engineering Center of Railway Transport, a joint venture between Russian Railways and Sinara Transport Machines. The first Russian high-speed 8-car train is equipped with an AI-based digital control and automatic train operation system, also allowing for third grade of automation operation. This high-speed train has a top operating speed of 360 km per hour. In addition to India and Russia, Poland is planning to join the club. It is anticipated that a large order for rolling stock will be fulfilled as part of the mega-project branded as Central Communication Port, which encompasses the construction of 2,000 km of high-speed rail lines. The local manufacturer, PASA, has expressed its intention to assume a leadership role within the consortium responsible for the development. A train will have a speed of 250 km per hour, representing the lower limit for high-speed trains. At the end, it must be noted, Turkey also places a significant reliance on domestic rail technologies. The country's high-speed lines are now serviced by Spanish CAF and Siemens, but Turasash, the national train producer, has announced plans to produce a train with speed of 225 km per hour in 2025. The idea is to keep the option of modifying this train to high-speed standards at a later date. 
Instead of a conclusion, we want to emphasize one more aspect of high-speed rail rolling stock, and that is this sort of industrial war between the European and Asian firms. As you know, high-speed trains have become a symbol of China's technological advancement, and they now want to position themselves as a dominant player in the global market. The Chinese government has actively promoted this so-called high-speed rail diplomacy, exporting technology to various countries such as Thailand, Hungary, Romania and Serbia, and before that, merging several domestic firms to create joint venture. CRC is now one of the largest, if not the largest, rail conglomerates globally, with significant sales figures. On the other hand, we have European companies like Siemens and Alstom, which are sort of consolidating their efforts to compete against CRRC and keep their position. For example, in 2018, they have formed a consortium to bid for the Malaysia-Singapore high-speed rail project, combining European expertise with local experience. While they face challenges such as strong ties between Southeast Asian governments and Chinese or Japanese firms, the European Consortium may present itself as a neutral alternative. However, the ability to secure financing remains an obstacle for European manufacturers in comparison to their state-supported rivals. Despite these challenges, there are still opportunities for European firms as demand for high-speed trains continues to rise, especially in Asia, provided they know how to adapt to local needs and enhance their competitive edge. Even though it is the fact Chinese magnate CRRC can produce high-speed trains to the same quality levels as European or Japanese competitors, there are a couple of factors playing against it. One factor is China's relatively short history with high-speed rail, making it unclear how well CRRC trains will hold up to wear and tear over time, or how much maintenance they'll need throughout their lifespan. This could affect the lower price of CRRC trains in the long run. Or is that just a convenient excuse for EU policymakers? In any case, CRRC's international quality image is still somewhere behind Alstom or Siemens, who both benefit from an impeccable reputation and track record. And those are the facts. You were watching the story of high-speed rail rolling stock, its technology and current market competition on Railways Explained. If you like our content and want to support our production in producing even more quality videos and diversifying topics, consider supporting us through a symbolic Patreon and PayPal donation. Also, you can do the same by clicking the Join button and considering the possible options. Thanks for watching and see you next time!